What is purposeful productivity? Our guest today is going to talk about the importance of organizations that intentionally and effectively communicate. Organizations that look to create safe, inclusive workplaces. Because when you have a thriving culture and the organization is effectively communicating, there is purposeful productivity happening and those goals are getting hit. When we look at ourselves and look at intentions and what makes us tick, what brings about our true authentic selves, it's important that we also think about that purposeful productivity in our own lives. It's important for us to look at our time in our day and say, what is bringing me joy? What is bringing me fulfillment? What is bringing me satisfaction? Because if we are not doing the things that bring us joy and that we love, there's a lack of motivation. There's a lack of productivity. So let's dive into the conversation today with Stacey Saunders as we unpack purposeful productivity. Welcome to the GSD Factor Podcast. I'm your host, Misha Blameyer Farish, and today I have Stacy Saunders joining me. Hi, Stacy. How are you? Hi, Misha. I'm doing well. Thank you so much for having me um, on today. This I'm so excited for our conversation. Same, same. So, Stacy, share with our listeners a little bit about you and your story. Oh my lord. Okay, so we did not discuss this beforehand, but at the same time. I am a leadership and business coach. I work with uh, groups and individuals on their team dynamics. So like, how are they communicating with each other? How, um, how are they getting their work done, their projects done? Possibly in some cases, how they're not getting those projects done and, and communicating effectively. I come from a, an approach of how like in terms of productivity like how does this actually serve you are your actions moving you forward like is your behavior moving you forward or not and really coming from that space and less from the space of like oh we just need to continue you know grinding in the world so really bringing in the humanness of it all to be like great this also plays into your output of it all right which is typically how we look at productivity so I, you know, I am learning about my, myself in all of these spaces because in terms of I'm a, you know, in terms of the group dynamic piece, I'm an only child, so I'm still also figuring out how I function in groups. But it's like, oh, here's where I studied it, so I can break it down, pull it apart. It's almost like a puzzle piece to me, and then let's put it back together, right? In a way that moves us all like forward and. That's the part that I just really enjoy in terms of how I got here. You know, I've had many different types of careers up to now, but it's like, oh, here's how all the things that have served me, like in the past, to be like, these are all the like best parts of what I enjoyed doing (laughs) in the past. (laughs) I love your concept and we're going to dive into it here for a moment. I love your concept of purposeful productivity Yes, because I think people who get shit done do so with intention and with purpose. Yes. So let's look at that purposeful productivity for a minute. Absolutely. Talk to us about what you are seeing with your clients and the organizations that you work with and how it's not just productivity for productivity's sake. It's not just busyness, but it is that purposeful productivity. And, you know, what are some of those lessons and nuggets that you can share with our listeners? Yeah, absolutely. Well, and it's interesting that you've used the term busyness in this conversation, because at one point in time, my tagline was, uh, I take you from busyness to business. So it's really like, how do we get out of our heads, out of that spin place, out of that grind? Like, I just have to get this done. Like, it, like no matter if I'm tired, you know, spent, like burnt out, just, I don't want to do it. Like, just whatever of those factors that come into play when we think of like productivity is to really tease tease that out. So going back to that puzzle piece to really be like, 
what part of this is burning me out? Is it the fact that I don't want to do it? And so I'm, you know, procrastinating or just kind of looking at just ways to prolong the inevitable, right? Or is it that, oh, this requires more time and I'm, how do I factor that in? So how do I create more boundaries and, you know, in that way to allow myself uh, the space to be able to get the thing done, right? And then just really uh, just stepping back to really just be like, is this, is what I'm doing or how am I moving forward actually important to me, right? So we both have our own values and we were talking about this beforehand uh, to where it's like, oh, how does this fit into this, right? So I, I have a value of, you know, integrity or even courage, you know, even courageousness, right? So what does that look like on a day-to-day basis and how do you tease that out? What do you see as you are talking through these lessons and these points with your with your clients and the organizations that you're working with? What do you think is their top reason for being busy versus being purposefully productive? Yeah, um, I would say that it's a combination of organization and discipline, but I'm going to stick with the organization because it's, you know, how do I organize like my thoughts, right, to then put them into action? How, like, how am I organized in the review of what I'm already doing? So some of that discernment and then, you know, also looking at the flip side of setting boundaries is also then what are you expecting from others, right? So how do how do you now expect more from the people around you and how to be able to facilitate that, right, and move forward? And so the organization piece can look like a couple of things. And so it, it is just like, oh, wait, like am I organizing my thoughts properly to like move me forward in the way that is enriching to me? Or am I just kind of doing more of the same and expecting a different outcome? So I feel like you're now diving into the cultural aspect of organizations, which I think when you look at culture or when you and when you're looking at organizations and you're looking at helping them effectively communicate, you're helping them with this purposeful productivity. I would imagine that cultural check-in, that what kind of culture are they driving? What kind of culture are they encouraging? How are they operating as a as an organization comes into play? So talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah, absolutely. And it's the words that we use to describe ourselves. Like you had asked me about, you know, my my bio before we started this conversation. And, you know, and I was like, oh, it was like, is it updated, right? And it's kind of like, but, you know, the, the information is, is the same, right? And we keep keep it generic enough to where then it's like, oh, I can flow in and out of it in a way that makes sense, uh, whatever space that I'm in. But certainly it's like, they're also just like not words on a page, right? So then it's like, how am I breathing into that value of courage or that value of integrity to where let's define it, let's break it down, let's make it to where it's just every interaction to be like, oh, here's what integrity looks like in this moment. And that can be something as easy as I speak up, right? Or if I have that gut feeling about what is being said in the room, I say something, right? Um, So it doesn't need to be this big, like, bold, like, you know, integrity. It's like, no, it's just, here's how I define it to be like, do and say what I do, like, just be true to my word, right? And I help people do that. And I'm actually really proud of one of my partnerships with Ensure Quality to where they have their cultural certification program that I am one of their facilitators. It's a 12-week intensive cohort style training to where you do, you know, step into what is my mission, vision, value, like, how am I breaking that down um, on a day-to-day basis? How am I communicating that out to my team, to my stakeholders, and just in my life as a whole, right? And so we, throughout the 12 weeks, you know, there's the modules that you go through, but then there's also the group coaching that's available as well to where we really sort of sit down together and have that not only coaching from, you know, an expert, someone like me, but also like, what are you learning from your other peers that are going through this cohort 
uh, with you, right? And then how do we lift each other up as we move forward? And I am learning as much in these sessions as with like my, in, you know, my own coaching individuals or groups to where it's like, I'm, you know, I continue to learn as well. So yes, I am the expert, but it's also like, oh, wait, here's how I'm also growing as I continue to facilitate and train and be a coach in all the ways. (laughs) I think what is so important is there needs to continue to be this focus on personal and professional development of our individuals because our organizations are made of individuals and they're not robots, they're people. And so we have to take the time to pour into them and give them that space, that safe space to be able to use their voices, be their true authentic selves. And I think that culture is still a really important factor, I think, for organizations that I think recognize that their people are one of their most valuable resources. Culture is important. Culture is key. And I think when you have that focus on culture and bringing about this holistic workplace environment, all of a sudden now you're going to have that intentional and effective communication. You're going to have that purposeful productivity. You're going to see the results that you have stated as the, here's here are the strategic goals for the organization. But I think when the people are happy and feeling fulfilled and joyful, they're going to get shit done and they're going to get it done effectively and intentionally, right? Yes, yes, 100%. Well, and you also brought up another term that's used often, which is that authenticity. And it's like, oftentimes, I feel like people think it's like, I'm either being authentic or I'm not. And I'm like, no, look at it as a soundboard or even like on a continuum. So I'm, I'm really good about like, put this on a continuum. So like, you know, one to 10, what does this look like? Because again, you are always walking around as you. Do I need to be at a 10? No, not in most cases. Like I personally am oscillating between like a seven or eight on any given day because a 10 is just, that's the truly bold. I'm speaking my mind. I could potentially be jailed. Like, again, it's just, you know, the, I think of, you know, the Angela Davises, I think of Martin, like, you know, I think of, again, the activists, right? The activists in me, but do I need to be at a 10 all the time? No. And so where can I dial that back? So again, the soundboard situation, right? Like you don't always have it at high levels. You figure out, you know, what makes someone sound beautiful, right? And we were even talking about that just now with my microphone. It's kind of being like, oh, here you sound a little this. And so I was like, how do we make that better, right? So that's what I am there for, that fine tuning, right? To just be like, hey, here's how this could look differently. Or to, again, that gut check, because I getting shit done. Like I know you know about this. So where it's just like, what is, what is your gut telling you or what is that, you know, spidey sensor, however it comes to you, right. To then take stock of that. And that's that intentionality piece, or at least that conscious piece to be like, what is this informing me of? And then how do I now want to change how I move forward? And it can also be okay to be like, I don't want to move forward. Great. That just also has a different set of circumstances that then come with that, right? And oftentimes we go with the knee jerk just because it's like, well, I can't say, I couldn't possibly say no. Like I couldn't possibly like not go to this thing or I couldn't, like we couldn't possibly move forward in this direction. It's like, we could possibly do all of those things, right? It's just a matter of like, then do you want to deal with whatever comes next from those things, right? And then how do we build build out a strategy? So oftentimes I'm allowing people that space to consider the no maybe in there or like, you know, what is the true yes in there and just, you know, sit with them and be like, both are equally valid, right? Like not one is like good or bad. It's like, no, they're both equally valid. And I'm not going to put that distinction you know, in there, like something being good or being bad. It's just like, you just, you have two choices. Where, where do you want to go? So we have a lot of entrepreneurs that are listening to our podcast. And so as you are working with organizations that are more established and have been around and already kind of maybe have this culture, maybe they're trying to change the culture, but they already have an established culture. Retrospect is always there. 
it's always that, oh, if I had known these things, X, Y, Z. So if Stacy was coaching our entrepreneurs, our founders, what would be some of your Stacy tips and tricks on how to establish this healthy culture that has this purposeful productivity, that has this culture mindset that is allowing for that authenticity. It's offering that inclusivity in the workplace in a safe space. What would you say, obviously you're working with leaders that are down the road, but what would you say to those younger leaders, those younger selves about If you would do, you know, here's a couple tips and tricks to keep in mind as you're building your organization. Yeah, absolutely. And I don't know that the tips or tricks change because again, if you're you're talking about safety, right? So that like speaking up and again, it doesn't need to be at a hundred. It's literally just to be like, hey, could you say that again? Or like, because again, if you're kind of like, did I hear that correctly? someone else is probably also thinking the same thing. So this is where it's just, hey, like, can you say that again? Or just come, like, come from it from a curiosity space, not from a attacky space, right? And we've seen a lot of that to just be like, mm, like just people just coming at you, right? You know, whatever the instance is. So it's more of just, let's soften it. Like, let's literally just be like, huh, that's interesting. That didn't sound right. Did they mean that that way? Like, you know, just kind of, and then, you know, really have that curious or childlike, you know, wonder about it to just be like, you might be able to do something differently about that, right? Because kids are always just in that creative building it or like, we did it this way last time and like build it like a new way or just even as they're constructing something to just kind of be like, oh, wait, just changing in the moment, right? And I think as as we get older, we, or maybe for me, I'll just speak for myself, that maybe some of that went away to just be like, oh, wait, like here's where I can be iterative. Where can I be just experimenting with like, how do I speak up in the world? And so I would say baseline tip is just be playful with the ways that you're speaking up and maybe start in spaces that feel more, I'll I'll just use safe, but that feel more comfortable to you. So oftentimes I practice with my friends. So again, if I want to have more, you know, authentic, deeper interpersonal relationships, well, I got to start somewhere, right? So here I, I practice with my friends to just be like, hey, right now, like, I know we were joking, but like that statement didn't sit right with me. And like, we just kind of talk it out and clear pretty quickly in the moment, like what went wrong. And that's what I'm moving people towards in organizational states, whether it's in the beginning or whether it's down the line, because certainly down the line, you've possibly picked up a few bad habits along the way. And like, while everyone wants to be like, I don't want to be a part of a toxic environment or like, this is a toxic environment. It's like, okay, if that, if that is how you truly think of this, then also how did you create it? Because you're here, so you are also part of what you're saying is, is an issue. So again, if you don't want that, and sometimes when we were talking about toxic cultures or toxic uh, situations, it's like, oh, wait, it's all of those things that were not said and said earlier, potentially, or someone had that knee jerk, Right. And we're seeing this in a lot of businesses in a lot of different ways. Right. And how does that play out? Right. Because it's not about like, oh, we can't say something again, going back to that consequence. Like you can say whatever you want to say. You just have to then be able to deal with the consequences of that, that thing that you said or that thing that you did. And so that is the space that I'm really helping people hold themselves to the fire for it and just be like, that didn't really align with your mission statement or that didn't really align with your value statement. And again, these are not just words on the page or words on your website to just be like, oh, because you know, I feel like many organizations have some form of you know, inclusive or um, maybe even integrity or maybe even authentic on their website. But it's like, okay, well, what does that actually look like in this meeting? What does that look like when I am at the coffee, the water cooler? What does that look like when you're talking to your incoming clients? What does that look like when you're talking to your 
existing clients, right? So when we talk about the stakeholders, and is that the same conversation? Like, what if those like people all got together? So like, if you had a, a teammate talking to an external stakeholder talking to a potential client, would they all walk away with the same to be like, oh, that organization is this, or they're moving into this value? What I love about this clip is that you have just highlighted so many of our GSD factor attributes because we talk about when we're being inquisitive, we're being curious without judgment, right? We are asking questions, we're getting that clarity. How many times, how many, you know, how many situations have we all found ourselves in that if we had just paused, taken a breath, and said, I just need to clarify right? How many things would be resolved? How many things would have maybe pivoted differently? I also love your tap into being imaginative because as children, I have two tiny humans. So I see this on a daily basis is they build something. They don't like that. They'll break it down. They'll build it again, or they're working together. Well, what if you did this? And what if you did that? And I think as adults, we sometimes forget that childlike behavior. We forget about dreaming big in that way. We we have so much adultness that we forget about what was it like, you know, when I was building this or thinking about this or dreaming about this. And I think that that's a beautiful reminder too of, you know, when, again, give yourself that space, give yourself those moments to quiet your mind. You know, I heard an artist recently share that somebody said to him, well, what are those moments that you get the inspiration? He's like in the silence because he's like, I have five kids, I'm touring, I'm doing all the things. I get my creativity now in the silence because I don't have the noise. And I think a lot of times in organizations, there's just a lot of noise going on, whether it's within the culture, whether it's within the employees, whether it's with the clients. And it's like, okay, we got to, we got to quiet the noise to be able to think clearly, speak clearly, be purposefully productive. And I think that those are pieces that organizations forget. And I think the final piece that you touched on, which is beautiful, is that influence, right? It's not just about saying the things or putting the things on paper or putting the things on a website. It's actually living it out. And it's actually being very intentional and saying, this is who I am here this is who I am there. And this is what it looks like, whether we're in a team, an internal team meeting, an external team meeting, or what have you. And so I think, you know, let's talk to our leaders that are listening to us that are really wanting to be more influential and more intentional in their organizations and their cultures for this going into these next quarters and seasons. Yeah, absolutely. And you've, you've said a lot just in, in, in that hot take, right? So, and it's interesting. And for me, what is curious is the, the way that we describe things keeps, you know, keeps tra- changing. So for me, you know, I worked through the the nineties and I think at that time, you know, it was called mindfulness. I think now we're calling that more mental health or just kind of all of these ways or even, you know, the beautifully written book, you know, rest is resistance um, to where, again, stepping away from that grind culture to where like, I always have to be going. Well, if I'm always moving, then I'm not truly being conscious about what is happening. Right. And certainly as we continue to move through these endemic times, so at the height of the pandemic with that, you know, forced us, many of us, all of us to do was to like slow down. And then that actually probably scared the shit out of a lot of people because it's like, now what, right? And then what am I learning about myself now in this space? And it's like, huh, isn't that interesting, right? And I'm just saying that just for me, like, just, huh, isn't that interesting, right? And then I have a choice to make. I can continue down this path to where, oh, the road to burnout, the road to this, the road to where I can't potentially think critically about what was just said to me in the room because I'm tired AF, right? I'm doing shots of right, like all the energy drinks, pick your choice, right? Pick your poison. You know, all the things with the coffee, right? Like all, you know, and again, nothing wrong with any of those things individually, but again, it's kind of like how, like the consumption of it, right? Just so that I can keep grinding basically and it's like 
no, 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 no. Like, just, you don't need to do that anymore, right? Like, it's literally the, like, red pill, blue pill, right? Matrix style. Here, do you want to wake up or do you want to continue doing the thing that you're doing, right? And that's, you know, for me, the space that I hold for folks because it's just kind of like, you know, because in many ways people are, you know, coming to me at that point to where it's just like, this isn't working. Whatever language they use, they just be like, oh, my, you know, my team isn't communicating well, like the projects aren't getting done. It's like, I'm bad with deadlines or like just however it comes to me, they're at a point of overwhelm, right? So they're looking to me to ease their situation. And I typically use ease as a verb, which means slightly less difficult. So easier Because most people just mean like, oh, it's easy, meaning that there's not going to be any sort of resistance. It's like, no, that doesn't make any damn sense. But it's just like, no, this is going to be easier. And if you continue using these tools in more situations, then then you don't have to worry about like, oh, is this a safe space? Because again, the safety comes from when everyone is speaking up. Like the unsafety is just like, Oh, like this person, like where I get the sense that this person isn't sharing something, right? Like that's what's creating the unsafety or to be like, what you're saying to me, I don't believe you, (laughs) which was often my case, like in the nineties to just be like, you know, again, not, you know, not to get too personal, but again, I intersect, like you can see that I am a black woman, like, you know, and then adding in the queerness of it all uh, later on in life. But it's just like, okay, great. I do not believe that you care about me as a human, right? So as a Black woman standing before you in the 90s, right, or even in this current environment, whatever that looks like, so how? So, that, so that's creating the unsafety piece, right? And I forget what we called it then, but, you know, it's like it's some version of those, like, difficult conversations or, like, critical conversations or, like, whatever – kind of euphemistic fantasy lighthearted language we want to use to describe these things it it all comes back to like yes slow down how do we be mindful about what we're doing how we're saying it and how we're uh, acting that out on a day-to-day basis and Another thing that I wanted to touch on just with younger, younger folks, so entrepreneurs just stepping out and like, what does this look like? Even with uh, people who are established, but there's also like that space of, I'm going to say failing, but it's kind of like that you may not get it right. And I will use myself as an example to be like where I'm at today. And I've been on my own now, like I'm heading into like my ninth year, but it's like where I started like my business is not what I'm doing today. And at that point in time, like when I first started out, so nine years ago, was almost like a project manager for hire to be like, give me your project, give me give me your task that you don't want to do, take care of it, right? What I learned about myself was like, I don't actually like doing that. <laughs> I don't like doing that. What I like doing is training, talking to people. Again, going back to that puzzle, let's tease this out. Is this working? Is, is that not working? and being able to hold that space for folks to figure it out. So I was like, that's way more fun for me. And so like, let's do that, right? How do we build in that? How do I build in, you know, speaking? Because I do enjoy that. Like, how do I, you know, just tease out the pieces that I enjoy doing that actually fit to my, my strengths, which is strategy and people, so relationship top two strength finders to where it's like, and then how does that just play out on a day-to-day basis? So that would be the other thing that I would recommend to uh, the newer entrepreneur, entrepreneurs is like, like the perfection, like that, like that's a myth or even that to be like, I just read this beautiful book to where I'm teasing out, like how can we see perfection as almost like a superpower? Like, again, what is that informing us of? Right. But also just going back to that, how to just be playful. I like to call it failing fast and failing forward, right? Because we need to fail as fast as we can because when we fail, we're actually learning. It's not actually a failure. It's actually saying, all right, I want to I want to learn quickly. I want to try this. I know this first version is not going to be the version that I want or going to be the first version that I'm going to take to market or going to be the first service that I'm going to provide. So let's fail fast and then let's pivot and relaunch it and try again, right? And I think that that mindset 
progress, not perfection, is I think so needed in organizations today. And I love what you said about nine years ago, what your business looked like is nothing like what it looks like today. And you allowed yourself to fail fast. You allowed yourself to fail forward and you have allowed it to evolve and grow with you as you have grown. Because as we are growing, we're changing and that's good. And in order to be able to do that, we've got to live life with open hands is what I call it. So because that way shit can flow in and shit can flow out and you never know what it's gonna look like. Right. And I think that that's what a lot of people, they hold on to something so dear and so tightly that they are missing some beautiful things. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and then just to add on to like what you just said as well, is like depending on the environment that you're stepping away from. So like from a, a young entrepreneur's part to be like, oh, if they're now doing a career shift to where it's like, oh, they were more in a corporate structure or maybe more of a hierarchy structure structure to then be like, oh, what are the things that I now have to get rid of, right? And I may be moving too quickly into my thing that I'm leaving behind, but it's also to be like, oh, wait, like there's some unlearning that needs to happen or to be like, wait, I don't want to continue what I've been doing, right? So whether there's some, you know, some thought process things in there and uh, when we start to talk about, you know, systems as a whole, they're like really like, okay, right. If we're trying to break down this system or like when we talk about institutionalized thoughts or values or actions, it's like, here's how that happens. Right. And it really is at that day to day to be like, oh, right now in this conversation, here's what that looks like. So we have to train ourselves to be able to recognize that, to be like, oh, that just happened. Like, you know, <laughs> okay. And again, have that curiosity to be like, oh, I can shift this up or to be like, oh, that is not where I thought this was going. <laughs> and those are fun. Because we're just like, wow. Like, okay. Huh. Right. <laughs> I do that a lot. Like, just literally like, oh, okay. <laughs> That's where the pause comes. It's where the pause Oh, so good, Stacy. So good. So, what is Stacy powerfully choosing in 2024? Yeah, I, I love that that question. And I, as we were talking about me being being a guest on your on on your show today, it's also evolved or like shifted over time because it's like we, this wasn't like oh we had the conversation about me being on your podcast and it's like boop it you know happened like next day or like the next week. So we've had some time. So it, you know it's been a few months, and so here I am. I'm probably maybe by the time this airs, I may have had my birthday or it will be my birthday. So it's like, Oh, like I'm in that space of introspection and like, what am I wanting, you know, for, for the next year, kind of just what, you know, how has this year played out? So where I'm landing today is in the space of unburdening. So being unburdened and what does that look like for me? And so, for me, is that a shedding of some old ways? So just as we've been talking about today, is it, you know, how do I want to step into the future? And like, what can I let go of? So just what are all the ways that I can be unburdened? You're shedding the shit, girl. I'm shedding the shit. Shedding the shit, girl. Yes. Like, get that on a t-shirt. Like, you're shedding the shit, girl. Like, do you have that t-shirt? I will buy that. Like, just soul. How about that? Yes. <laughs> Let's get your kids involved. Like we're just, yeah, yeah. I have a whole stuff series for them. So we'll, they will, yes, we'll do a shedding the stuff and then they, <laughs> and then I wear the shedding the shit. Yes, exactly. I get it. I love you. Like, you know, I have a stuff. I was like, oh, it took me a minute to probably, like, oh, right. Like you just had to clean it up. Okay. That's fine. It's like, yeah, that, that works. <laughs> Oh, don't worry though. My kids are already like, so when can I use the word? And I was like, oh, when you're a little older. It's like, am I older today, mommy? (laughs) Technically, yes. But like, no, you still can't use it. Oh, 
Well, Stacy, this has been such a joy and I really appreciate it. And thank you so much to our listeners for joining us. And we will provide all your contact information in the show notes, especially for anyone that wants to reach out to you. But thank you so much. We're excited to follow you as you are unburdening yourself here, uh, ending 2024 and going into 2025. But thank you so much for holding space for us today. And to our listeners, don't forget to get shit done. Thanks for listening to the GSD Factor podcast. If you liked this episode, please rate and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform, where you can also find previous episodes. Let's also connect on LinkedIn and Instagram. If you're looking for more information on the GSD Factor, visit us at gsdfactor.com. And always remember to GSD, get shit done.